Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic nitrogen and its compounds and our subtopic for today is going to be nitrogen 2 oxide. So previously we looked at nitrogen 1 oxide. We saw how it's prepared and some properties. So for this lesson we are going to be focusing on nitrogen 2 oxide look at the laboratory preparation and some of the physical and chemical properties and then you will do a question. So this is referred to as nitrogen 2 oxide. So you can see the formula of nitrogen 2 oxide. Remember that 2 is the oxidation number of nitrogen. Oxygen oxidation number is 2. So they can cancel out. If you crisscross, you get this. So this is another oxide of nitrogen and it is prepared um, by reacting of 50% uh, concentrated nitric acid with copper tannins. So it has to be 50%. It's half concentrated. It's not fully concentrated. So no heat is required because you can see we are using a concentrated acid. This reaction occur on its own, start on its own. So when copper reacts with this dilute nitric acid, it forms copper nitrate. Uh, plus water plus nitrogen uh, 2 oxide so you can see um, there is an oxidation that occurs in this case and you can see copper reacts with to form nitrogen uh, copper nitrate and you can see there is nitrogen um, uh, 2 oxide gases that is being given off so some of the observations you notice from this experiment is when the copper, when the acid is added to the copper, there is an effervescence that occurs in the flask, and then you are going to see some brown fumes because the brown fumes result from the nitrogen two oxide gas being produced reacting with air in the flask. Remember, we have air in the flask or in the apparatus, so this nitrogen two quickly reacts with those that air to form nitrogen four, and you know nitrogen four is going to be a brown. Uh, gas it's a brown fume as you learn later on so that is the reason why we see some brown fumes in this reaction but of course after some time the, the amount of oxygen in the flask reduces so we are able to produce our nitrogen 2 oxide so nitrogen 2 oxide reacts with oxygen as you can see in the equation to form nitrogen 4 oxide the brown fumes eventually disappear and the gas is collected over water. The reason why they eventually disappear is that when they are moved through the tube and they come to the over water where there is water, the nitrogen four oxide you notice in the next session is that it's very soluble in water. It dissolves to form an acidic solution. So it is going to dissolve eventually. That's why they eventually uh, disappear. So the nitrogen four oxide fumes dissolves in the water in the trap, resulting to an acidic solution of nitrous acid. The residue in the, in the flask is a green solution. So we form a green solution of copper 2 nitrate. So you can see we have identified two observations, uh, three observations. First is the fervescence, there is production of the brown fumes, and then now there is this green solution of copper 2 nitrate that is left in the round bottom flask or the flask. So the gas is obtained when ammonia reacts with oxygen in presence of platinum catalysts. You'll see that later on as we do the industrial processes. So some of the properties of nitrogen 2 oxide is that it is colorless and insoluble and neutral to litmus. And then it's also slightly denser than air, meaning it's slightly heavier than air. So if you were to collect it, you'd collect it by downward delivery because it tends to go down because it's heavy. And then it combines with oxygen very readily. Very readily means that very quickly to form nitrogen four oxide, which are the brown fumes. It does not sub support combustion. Uh, but in case of uh, strong burning, like with magnesium and phosphorus, it continues to burn in it, uh, thus reducing it. So it's an oxidizing agent. So remember also magnesium can react with nitrogen 2 oxide for magnesium oxide. We said it produces also a lot of heat that causes the dissociation of nitrogen and oxygen. So magnesium 
magnesium is able to react with oxygen in the nitrogen too and then nitrogen gas is formed so you can see these are two the two exceptions and you'll notice magnesium is such an exception even when it comes to a nitrogen one oxide as we previously discussed so when it's passed over hot finely divided copper it is reduced to nitrogen gas as well so also copper reacts with nitrogen two to form copper oxide and nitrogen gas is given off so that is the equation of the reaction of copper with nitrogen 2 it forms copper oxide and nitrogen gas is given off some of the chemical properties is that it reacts with iron 2 sulfate solution uh, and then it forms a black coloration we call it the brown ring this is one of the tests for nitrates. So it forms a brown ring and that ring is called nitrogen. Nitrogen ion 2 sulfate or nitroso ion 2 sulfate. This is what is the um, br uh, brown ring test as you hear it commonly. So you can see the ion, the ion 2 sulfate which is green in solution and reacts with nitrogen 2 to form uh, nitroso ion 2 sulfate or nitrogen 2 oxide ion 2 sulfate complex and you can see the only difference between these two equations is that we are introducing the dot then we introduce the nitrogen 2 oxide so it shouldn't be hard for you to be able to identify this complex that is formed so that yeah it also reacts with hydrogen uh, when you uh, use packet and when it reacts with hydrogen, it is reduced to nitrogen gas. So when you react hydrogen with nitrogen to oxide, it forms water and nitrogen gas is produced in return. Some of the chemical tests of nitrogen 2 is that it forms brown fumes when exposed into the air. The reason why it forms brown fumes is because it oxidized by oxygen to form nitrogen four oxides which is brown in color so some of the uses of nitrogen two oxide is that it is used in as an intermediate in the manufacture of nitric acid as we said there's a note where i'd mentioned that it is used um, in production of nitric acid it's one of the compounds that is formed uh, so it is going to be an intermediate when we get to those uh, large scale processes. It's not easy to handle owing its ease of oxidation. And so let's look at a few questions that is going to help us to understand what you have been learning. The setup in the figure can be used to prepare nitrogen to oxide. Use it to answer the questions that follow. So we have substance A reacting with copper tannins to form nitrogen 2 oxide. Substance A, we are going to call it 50%, always mention the concentrated nitric acid. When the gas jar containing nitrogen 2 oxide is exposed to air, a brown color is observed. Explain. This is because nitrogen 2 oxide reacts with oxygen in the air to form nitrogen four oxide, which is a brown gas. That's an equation for the reaction which occurred in the flask. So we said copper reacts with a 50% nitric acid to form copper nitrate plus water plus um, nitrogen two oxide. So we balance the equation and put the correct state symbols. So when we balance, we will place a three in front of copper a three in front of copper nitrate. Um, this is going to affect our nitrate. So we will have three times three, which gives us nine plus one, 
아, 재현. 음. So if we put a two here, it means we have to put an eight here. So that we have eight hydrogen, that is eight nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Remember there is a two here. So the nitrogen becomes um two times. This is six, we need two here so that it can balance. So that balances our equation uh, for the reaction of copper with nitric acid. So that brings us to the end of nitrogen two. You can see it's an easy oxide to unpack. So if there's a part that you didn't understand, make sure you go back and check it out. So for the next lesson, we are going to be looking at nitrogen four oxide, which is going to be formed cumulatively, the last oxide of nitrogen. And then we will dive deep now to the other compounds of this topic. So see you in the next lesson.